If you bought a Sony camera in the last few years, you definitely want to watch this video. Even if you're currently on the fence about buying one, I bet watching this video is going to get you over the line. But on the flip side of all that, if you're a gimbal user, this video is going to be a bit depressing because the software I want to talk about today, the free software actually, is basically going to make your gimbal obsolete. So today we're talking about a completely free software made by Sony called Catalyst Browse. And right now you're looking at its best feature by far, the Catalyst Browse Stabilizer. Unfortunately, this particular feature doesn't work with every single Sony camera. So when I go more in depth uh, about the stabilizer, I'll go through the list of cameras that it does work with. But in the meantime, I want to talk to you about another cool feature that does work with any camera, even Canon and Panasonic cameras. As you can see, once you are inside Catalyst Browse, you can open and play any clip available on your computer, no matter the camera brand, no matter the bit rate, it truly opens and plays everything very easily. And for me, that's a big deal because I typically shoot in 10-bit 422 with my Sony FX3 camera. And when I just want to quickly look at my footage to see if everything is okay, because it's 10-bit footage, if I try to play it on my Mac with QuickTime, I'll have audio but no video. And if I use VLC instead, which is meant to open anything, it'll be the opposite. There won't be any audio and the video will play, but it'll be super choppy. In Catalyst Browse, however, I can watch any clip from any camera and it will play both video and audio super smoothly. Not only that, but when I select a clip, it gives me all the metadata that comes with that clip, which is super useful if I can't remember which frame rate I filmed a particular clip at or which codec I used, because as you can see, there's a ridiculous amount of info in here. You can even color correct your clips directly in Catalyst Browse if you want by clicking the adjust color button and now you have all the tools necessary to do your own color correction. But I don't think you can import LUTs though. So personally I wouldn't really use this feature but I'll show you a bit later on when it could be a good idea to use it. Alright so let's get to the part of the video that you've all been waiting for and that you probably already skipped to, the stabilizer. As you can see, the stabilization capabilities of this software look incredible when compared side by side with the raw footage, but it's even more impressive in my opinion when compared with the same clip stabilized in Premiere Pro's Warp Stabilizer instead. Alright, so I'm not an expert in this very technical topic, so please don't quote me on any of this, but the reason why Catalyst Browse is so good is because it's using the gyroscopic metadata from your camera. So basically your camera produces um, X, Y and Z axis information while it's shooting and Catalyst Browse uses that information to uh, stabilize your footage, which is completely different from what the Warp Stabilizer in Premiere Pro is doing, because Warp Stabilizer analyzes the footage after the fact, and then based on that interpretation, uh, stabilizes your footage the best it can. 
which is why stabilizing in Premiere Pro or even in Final Cut for that matter is very hit and miss. So anyway, when you want to stabilize a clip in Catalyst Browse, it's super quick and easy. But first of all, you have to be filming with one of the following cameras. Either the Sony ZV-E1, the Sony ZV-E10, the A7C, the A7S3, the FX3, the FX6, the FX9, or the RX0 Mark II. And of course, if you're watching this in the future and there are new Sony cameras that have been released since I published this video, I can almost guarantee that they will have gyroscopic metadata as well. The one caveat to all this though is that there is no gyroscopic metadata recorded in any of those cameras when filming at 120 frames per second. So you're good to go at 24, 30 or 60, but just not at 120. Here, for example, you can see all the raw clips I shot with my Sony FX3 camera at a street ball tournament a few weeks ago. And it's easy to know which clips can be stabilized because they all have that little stabilization icon. So all the other files that don't have it are clips that I shot at 120 frames per second. But if I take this clip here, for example, to show you how to stabilize, you'll see how easy it is. First off, you just click on the stabilize button, which opens this comparison window by default. And you can change the view mode if you like to before or after, but I prefer personally the side-by-side -side comparison. Anyway, if you leave the stabilization mode in auto, it's going to zoom into your image way more than it needs because it's gonna try to make your footage 100% stable. Obviously, this is not great because one, it's cropping out a big chunk of your image and two, as you can see here, the resolution of your final clip will be much less than the original 4K clip that has a 3840 by 2160 resolution. So what you want to do at this point is adjust the cropping ratio manually and try to keep it as high as possible. So start at 100%, which is basically no stabilization, no crop, and slowly drag the slider to the left until you're happy with the result. Personally, I don't mind a little bit of shake at all. I think it makes my footage more real and more dynamic. So I don't think I've ever gone below 85%. Once you're happy with it, you can adjust the in and out points of your final clip at the bottom if you don't want the whole thing. Otherwise, to export, you need to click on this button right here, which opens the export settings. The first part is pretty basic. You choose the destination folder and you can also rename the file if you want. With the transcode settings, most people can just leave everything the way it is by default. Even if we open the advanced settings, I wouldn't change any of that either. Just make sure all these menus have the same as source option picked and you'll basically come out of this with the same file you came in as long as you didn't crop in too much. The only caveat is for people like me who shoot in 10-bit. Most formats in here will export 8-bit no matter what except for the XAVC intra format that will export in 10 bit. So make sure you use that one. But I've noticed that the exports do look slightly desaturated, slightly different anyway from my original 10 bit clips. So it could be a good idea in this particular case to color correct in Catalyst Browse before you export a new file. But personally, I've never done it. I just make a slight adjustment in Premiere Pro if need be and no one's the wiser. There are a couple more things though that you should know before you start filming if you intend to stabilize your footage in Catalyst Browse. First, you need to turn off all stabilization in your lens and in your camera. Um, not to say that if you keep them on, it's gonna ruin the whole thing, because it's not, but you will get the best performance out of this software when you're using completely raw, non-stabilized footage. The other thing is that it works a little better and seems to export a better looking finished product when there is less motion blur in your image. So when you're filming sports and there's obviously a lot of movement, so therefore a lot of motion blur, I would recommend cranking up your shutter speed at least a little bit. And if you want to learn how to do that properly, I already have a video on that topic, which is up on your screen right now. So make sure you go check it out. Otherwise, once again, thank you for watching and I hope I earned the privilege of your time.